This is lesson 9.5, page 516, solving quadratics using the quadratic formula. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, how to interpret the discriminant, and how to choose efficient methods for solving quadratic equations. Let's talk about this thing that's called the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula might be the easiest way to solve a quadratic equation. Here's the formula. It's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now you might think, wow, that looks complex. It's, it's very simple to use, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Now one thing we do have to be careful of when we use this formula. To use it, you must make sure the equation you, you are working with is in standard form and it equals zero first, which is what they're writing here. Okay, your equation must be in this form equaling zero before you attempt to use the quadratic equation. Okay? We're going to do a sample problem together here and have your calculator out and actually do this with me as I'm working through it on the video. We're going to solve this equation using the quadratic formula, 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. Now, right now, a is 2, b is negative 5, c is 3. All I have to do is take those and plug them in to the formula. You'll see they're doing that here. You can see they put a negative 5 in for b, so I have the opposite of negative 5. They put negative 5 in for b squared, 4 times a is 2, c is 3, all over 2 times 2. Now here's the biggest issue that I see every year. It's getting all of this into your calculator correctly and just not screwing it up by typing it in. So I have a few suggestions I'm going to make to you right now. We're going to, we're going to put this in our calculator together. Here's what I would do. I'm going to color code this. I always do the calculation underneath the radical first. So I have to do negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. So let's do that together. I'll take my calculator out, and we're going to do that. And you can see right now I typed in negative 5 squared minus 4 times a times c, and I get 1. Now I would suggest when you do this, you take paper and rewrite out the problem again now. So now I have the opposite of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of all of this stuff worked out to 1 all over 2 times a. Now 2 times a, 2 times 2 is 4. And then one more thing. Isn't the opposite of negative 5, 5? So I have 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 all over 4. Okay, we've got to type this in twice. We've got to type in 5 plus square root of 1 divided by 4, and then we have to type in 5 plus square root of 1 divided by 4. So let's do that. I'll type in the first one. 5 plus square root 1. Press Enter, because I want my calculator to add those two together first. Now divide by 4, and one of the answers is 1.5. So let me write that down. One answer is x is 1.5. Now, if you look in the book, you'll see one of the answers is 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is 1.5. Okay, let's get my second answer. I now have to type in 5 minus square root 1. Be sure to press Enter because I want my calculator to subtract these first. Now I'm going to divide by 4 in that denominator, and my second response is x equals 1. So my responses should be 1 and a half and 1, and in the book, you can see that's what they're getting. They're getting 1 and a half, 3 over 2 is 1 and a half, and 1. So it's really important that we put these in our calculator correctly. That's the number one reason people get these wrong. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and try these four questions. Try putting, using the quadratic formula to get these. Now, if they do not work out whole, that's okay. You can round your solutions to the nearest tenth if necessary.
Okay, and I'm back, and you should have gotten these responses for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 for 1, about 3.6 and negative 5.6 for 2, negative 1.2 and 1.9 roughly for 3. Now, be careful on 4. little reminder if you got number 4 wrong. Do you notice, did we have everything on one side, 0 on the other for this problem, and no, we don't. We have to add 1 to each side, so you would have to rewrite this out as 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0 first. If you didn't do this first, you're not going to have the right answer. So now A is 4, B is negative 4, C is 1, and now you can take that and plug it in the formula, and you ought to get a half when you do that. Okay? If you did not get these, make sure you ask about it in class. We can do it together to make sure we're getting to these. Quadratic formula is pretty effective with word problems because a lot of times with word problems, we don't always have problems that are easy to factor, easy to work out, and we can just plug A, B, and C in our formula and get it to work. So the number Y of Northern Rocky Mountain wolf breed pairs X years since 1990 can be modeled by this function. So real quick before we continue, Y is the number of breeds, and X stands for the number of years since 1990. When were there about 35 breeding pairs? Well, Y would have to be 35. So if you take the equation, if you plug in 35 for Y, if we solve that, we'll get the answer. Now, to use the quadratic formula, I can't have this equaling 35. I have to have it equaling 0. So the first step, it's pretty simple, just take away 35 from each side. That's how I get 0 on the left and 0.20x squared plus 1.8x minus 38. And now this is easy. Take A, A is 0.20. Take B, which is 1.8. Take C, which is negative 38. Take that information, plug it in the quadratic formula. Now, you're typically going to get two answers for these because we're adding and subtracting the same number. You're going to get two answers. Now, we've got to think about these answers. One answer for x is 10, and the other was negative 19. Now, remember, x stands for the number of years since 1990. Can we go back in time 19 years? And I hope you're saying, no, that doesn't make sense. So that's not a real answer. We could go forward 10 years in time, though. 10 years past 1990 is the year 2000. That's why they have one of the answers is the year 2000. Now, inside the quadratic formula, the b squared minus 4ac, you know I had you plug that in your calculator first. There's two reasons for doing that. Number one, it will make your calculator uh, typing in and it will make it manageable to help you get these right. But there's a second reason that's right here. B squared minus 4AC is known as the discriminant. Okay, so what is the discriminant? The discriminant tells you how many solutions your problem will have or how many x-intercepts your graph would have. Here's how you can tell. If B squared minus 4AC works to a positive amount, that means you will have two answers to the problem, or, in other words, that means your graph would cross the x-axis in two places. I'm circling that here. That means you'd have a parabola touching in two places. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, that means you only get one answer or one x-intercept. And if b squared minus 4ac is a negative amount, that means you would have no solutions and no x-intercepts. So you can see that here. In these next two samples, all they're doing is they're taking the quadratic formula. We want to find out how many solutions do we have. They're taking b squared minus 4ac. They're taking the discriminant of the quadratic formula. Now, if you notice here, a is 1, b is 8, c is negative 3. They're just taking that, they're plugging it into this discriminant, and they're getting a positive answer. That means this problem would have two solutions to it, just like you see here. Down in this sample, A is 9, 
B is negative 6 and C is 1. If we use the discriminant, we can tell how many solutions we have. I'm just going to take B squared minus 4AC. I'll plug in negative 6 for B, 9 for A, C for 1. And when I work it out, you notice we get 0. That means we only have one solution to that problem. When they ask you to find the number of x-intercepts of a parabola, this is asking the same question as how many solutions does it have? Okay? So you can use the discriminant to answer how many x-intercepts you have. So how many x-intercepts does this graph have? Let me erase that so we can see the numbers better. Okay? Well, let's find out. A is 2, B is 3, C is 9. Plug it into the discriminant. You can see they're doing that here we get a negative answer. That means that there would be zero x-intercepts. Okay, we have no solutions. So we have no x-intercepts on this particular graph. What I would like you to do is pause the video and try these three. It's asking you how many solutions the equation has, which is the same thing. This is the same question as asking how many x-intercepts does it have. So go ahead pause the video, and answer these three. Okay, I'm back, and what you should have found is in question seven, when you work it out, you get the discriminant working to zero, which means you get one solution. In question eight, your discriminant worked out to negative amount. That's no solutions. And in number nine, got to be careful. Actually, I should have said this about eight and nine both. You notice how 8 and 9 are not equal, equal to 0? You must rewrite the equation equal to 0 first, so I probably should have said that. Rewrite the equations, then plug it into the discriminant, and what you found in number 9 is you got a positive discriminant. That means you have two solutions to that. Now, you have learned five different methods over the past couple chapters on how to solve a quadratic, okay? And this table shows all five methods. For any particular problem, one method might be easier to use than another. So this table I would absolutely put in your notes. This goes through each of the methods we learned. We'll do them one at a time. Now back in chapter seven, you learned how to factor. Now, factoring as a teacher, I guess this is my personal favorite. Now, what's the good thing of the advantage of factoring? If you can factor the problem easy, this is probably the quickest way to do it. Okay, it's very straightforward if, it, if the equation is easily factored. Here's the negative or the disadvantage of factoring. If the equation can't be factored, you can't use this method. From there, you learned the graphing method. Now this was super easy. You could plug it in your calculator, use the y equals key, hit graph. Um, you could approximate the solutions, and it was really easy to do. There was no work. Now here are the disadvantages. Graphing may not give you the exact answer. You, if, if, if I ask for the exact answer, graphing might not give it to you. You might have to round it, so that could be a problem. Here's a, now, the book doesn't put, put this, but this is another major issue. The graphing method doesn't have any work. So what if I gave you or Mr. Keller next year gives you a test question and says, you know, solve this quadratic, show work. The graphing method isn't going to help you. I can't show any work. So the graphing method is great on a multiple choice question. It might not be great on a question that re requires work. The square root method, you learned that in lesson 9.3 a couple lessons ago. This is great if the problem does not have a B value. It might be the simplest way to solve that type of equation. Here's the bad part. If it does have a B value, the square root method doesn't work, okay? Which gets you to completing a square, okay? We learned how to complete a square. That allowed me to use the square root method, remember, when I, when I did have a B value, okay? Did have a B value. So if we do have a B value and you want to use square roots, you've got to complete a square. 
problem with now what's the bad part of that method? It can get complicated depending on the numbers. And then finally, and this is the lesson you're learning right now, the quadratic formula. Now here's the good thing about the quadratic formula. It can be used on any quadratic equation. It gives you the exact answers. Here's the bad part of the quadratic formula. Of all of these methods, it's the one that will take you the most time. So you've got to keep that in mind when you have time test. If you're just using the formula on every question, it's going to take you longer. So to wrap up the video, they had three questions here, quadratics. Solve the equation using any method. Explain your choice. Okay? So for A, I probably would have wrote this in standard form. Um, obviously, I can't factor that because there's nothing times something that gives me negative 1 adds up to negative 10. Uh, so I probably would have used the quadratic formula for this. The book ended up using, and I guess in some ways I agree with the book after looking at it, they decided to complete the square. There isn't any right method to use. You just want to use whatever's quickest for you. Okay? Now, in B, they use the quadratic formula, which that's not wrong. I don't know that I agree. I probably would have used Brooklyn. Let me just do that with you. Remember, Brooklyn will take, there's no common factor. I'll multiply 2 and 24. Now, here's why I'm doing that. My mental math's good. 2 times 24 is 48. Um, isn't isn't uh, negative 16 times 3 negative 48 and adds up to negative 13? So my factoring is good. This is going to be quicker than typing all this in my calculator. Don't forget, we, we multiplied by 2 in the beginning. We have to divide by 2 in the end. And I have x minus 8 and 2x plus 3. So one solution would be 8, which you see here. And 2x plus 3, let me solve that. Take away 3 and divide by 2. And I get negative 3 halves as my other. I think it would have been easier for me to do, use the Brooklyn method, but if you use the quadratic formula, it doesn't mean you're wrong. And then C, now I totally agree with the book here. This is factoring. Isn't 6 times 2, 12, and 6 plus 2, 8? So x plus 6 times x plus 2 could equal 0. x would be negative 6, x would be negative 2. Now, if I use the quadratic formula, would I get it right? Yes, I would. It's just going to take a lot longer. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.